to play football in Louisville, Kentucky. The Cardinals have the Tigers by 10 at the half. I'm Dave Woloshin. Nice to have you back. We're really honored now. Bill Olson, the athletic director of the uh, Louisville University, with us here. Uh, Bill, I, I know that there were some wild words said by your football coach this week, which probably put some heat on you, but can you tell us the status now officially of Louisville coming into this new conference? Well, uh, the first step's already been taken. I think the presidents have concluded that six institutions can come together and put together uh, the nucleus of a new conference. Now, the second step will be taking place in November when the presidents decide how you can expand that nucleus to include some basketball playing members. So we're looking forward to being part of that process. I think we've gotten everything put to bed back here in Louisville so that uh, we can be a part of it. Our football coach, obviously, uh, uh, you know, he's tried to create a little bigger rival rivalry he, between. He, he uh, did that. You know, it, it, I can remember when Lee Corso was here and Spook Murphy was your football coach. And remember one time in Memphis when when Memphis State was competing for a bowl game and and Spook put it on us pretty good. And then Lee the next year came back. We filled up this stadium for the first time in the history of Louisville. So the football rivalry is just about as good as the basketball, and it'll heat up in in future years. I'm sure as coach Schnellenberger uh, continues to make statements like that. I've only got about 15 seconds. Is, is it only going to be basketball playing schools? Might there be another football playing school that could come in? And, and what would be the final amount of teams? Well, I think six football schools uh, will be what it will be. Now, I, I can't say that for, for certainty, but uh, the, Coach Schnellenberger feels strongly that for the image and the future of the conference that Houston, Louisville, Memphis, Cincinnati, and Tulane uh, make up good image and good markets. Uh, Southern Mississippi and, and uh, East Carolina have been mentioned. It's up to the membership to decide which, which one of those two that they would want. But uh, I think the future can be marketed better with those others. And then take the Chicago and the Milwaukee and the St. Louis markets and maybe Birmingham and, and you might come up with a 10 team nucleus that would be pretty good. Looks like we got a lot of the great Midwest in there. Bill, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Again at halftime at Cardinal Stadium, 10 nothing Cardinals as the Tigers come out and stretch. They need to play catch-up. It's an old-fashioned standoff. There's no spare office around here. What's wrong with this one? It's mine. When a big city detective butts heads with a stubborn Southern sheriff, Oscar nominee Howard Rollins, Emmy winner Carol O'Connor in the heat of the night. Weeknights at 9 on Fox 24. You could be one of 40 people who will each win $124 cash. Just watch Fresh Prince at 6 and 10.30 on WPTY this November for your chance to cash in on a Fresh Prince ransom. When you said you were starting your own business, everyone just laughed and laughed. Today, the bank called. Your small business loan is approved. And you just had to laugh a little bit yourself. Now for some serious fun. The Mercury Cougar XR7 with a luxurious wraparound cockpit interior and a 205 horsepower V8 that just flat out kicks. It's affordable too. Oh yeah, you're going places. Due to exceptionally nice weather, my office is closed today, but do leave a message. Sunday, catch a two hour spine tingling special. Ah! The Simpsons Scarathon. Yeah, and a scientific experiment turns Bud into a mutant. Where are you going? To top of feel and kill myself. Married with children. Then grab a costume and join the party. Not the first crab I've seen in here, but certainly the biggest. The George Carlin Show. Beginning Sunday night at 6 on Fox 24. Fox NFL Sunday, the pregame yes. show that knows how to have fun. Is there a quarterback that you've never gotten to? Yeah, Bradshaw, but it's early this year, yeah? <laughs> ben, scrambling Randall Cunningham, leads the high-powered Philadelphia offense. And a tough Eagle D as they travel to the nation's capital to meet Norv Turner's Washington Redskins. The Philadelphia Eagles versus the Washington Redskins. Beginning Sunday at noon, sponsored by Treasure Bay Casino. We're the Rock 103 Wake Up Crew inviting you to win a new color TV by watching NFL football on WPTY and listening to the Wake Up Crew in the morning. 
Sometime during each Sunday game on WPTY, the Rock 103 logo will appear. The following morning, the Wake Up Crew... That's us. ...will ask what the score was when the Rock 103 logo appeared. Time out. you got to give me an instant replay. Watch NFL football Sundays on WPTY. Look for the 103 logo during the game and listen to the Wake Up Crew on Rock 103 the following morning for your chance to win a new color TV. From your home team, WPTY, Rock 103. Just a few moments away from the kickoff of the second half. Cardinals up on the Tigers 10 to nothing. We're rejoined by Bob Wynn now. And, well, offensively, it was a show by the Cardinals. This is the first play of the first series. Well, this was an excellent series, a very well-called series. Coswell Sims, one of their quicker players, takes the ball on a reverse, gets some nice blocking, good pursuit by the Tigers, but he finds a seam. Jerome Woods has to lasso him and run him out of bounds. They've got a tough fullback, and here's just straight ahead. Nice run by Chris Fitzpatrick. Well, this was by far his best run of the game. This is a very versatile player who uh, runs the ball well and catches passes, but here he pounds it down to about the 10-yard line. And then here we'll have Anthony Shellman doing his acrobatics. He goes up and over on a third down play. The Tigers had held on first and second down. Shellman at 38 yards. Fitzpatrick 39, and here's the problem. Three fumbles, two lost in the first half. We we talked at this time about this maybe was Joe Borch's fumble. I'm not sure Frank Fletcher knew the handoff was coming his way, and he was past the quarterback at that time. That leads to a field goal. And our current uh, margin here, 10 to nothing Louisville. Tigers will get the football to start the second half as Chuck Stobart knows he's got to play catch up and a quick strike would help. There's the numbers and it is all Louisville. Only 66 yards on the ground, 68 yards though total for Frankie Fletcher. There were some losses by Jones and Borich. And total yardage, it's over 100 yards the Cardinals' way. The turnovers hurt, and boy, time of possession was... Chuck Stobart's not going to like that at all. He's a firm believer in time of possession. But you know what? It could be worse. You're only down 10 nothing. Jerome Woods gets set. He hopes that uh, when he gets back on the field, the Tigers have some points on the board. Cannon goes off late. Brian Davis has it at the eight. Davis squirts ahead to the 25. That's Fairfield position. And that's where the U of M takes over. Eric Sanya on the stop. And a flag on the play. 13-yard return for Brian Davis, who's had the bulk of the work in that department. It's against, according to Quitman Spaulding, personal foul on Louisville. Yeah, a lot of Chicago Bear fans in, in Louisville. A young man had a Bears cap. Some of the old Cardinals played for the Bears. That Doug Buffoon. Oh, yeah. He's a former Louisville Cardinal. At, uh, Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Lead hit on the kicking team. After the play, it's first and ten. Well, if you're Chuck Stobart, that's the way you'd want to start. And there's some young Cardinal fans. He needs some grammar lessons already. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Or etiquette lessons, one of the two. Of course, you let it loose at a football game. That's part of the way it works. Frankie Fletcher gets a couple, so he's over 70 yards for the day. In case you're wondering what Boric did in the air, four of seven for 15 yards. No touchdowns. The longest completion was five yards. Tyrus McLeod, the uh, linebacker in the middle, makes the stop. Sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hard to believe the Tigers had the ball only 11-27 because they, I, I thought they had time to really move the football. Give uh, Fletcher one, second and nine. Tipped away. Good defense by Quinn. Mike Anderson actually had a bit of a cushion there. Sure did. Terry Quinn, one of the leading tacklers in the Cardinals secondary. Oh, nice read there. He gets a big paw up. Knocks the ball down. From up here, I thought that Anderson had a real good shot at making the catch on that. And from nowhere, Quinn reached up and got it. Strong safety. 
You know, he was a running back a couple of years ago, scored two touchdowns against Texas A&M. They moved some athletes from offense to defense because they're so thin there. Boric in trouble. Good points. And then he throws it away. Smart heads up play. There is no flag on the far side. Boric took a late hit. Alton Jones laid it on him. No call, and the Tigers go three and out to start the second half. We were talking with uh, Bill Olson about the up-and-coming conference. It looks pretty good that four of the great Midwest teams other than Memphis and Cincinnati will make it in. That being DePaul, St. Louis, Marquette, and UAB. Bethel, no fair catch call for it. Bethel still on his feet, finally dragged down, and there's a flag on the play. And the Tigers are saying that there's I believe we've had a, a fumble, fumble, Dave, and the and official they got is the ball, yeah. Memphis ball. One has. Now they're talking about it. Kenny Irvin came up with the football. I think we're going to have a block in the back was the flag on number 53 for Louisville here, I believe, was the signal. Oh, if the Tigers can pick this one up on the fumble, that would maybe be the break this offense needs, some momentum, something to get them going. Back to the conference as you look at Howard Schnellenberg are very concerned. There are four teams going for a possible two spots if they go to 12. Those four apparently are Dayton, UNCC, that's a hold on Louisville. It's declined. Tigers have the football. Oh, what a break. That was only a 25-yard punt, by the way. But the Tigers will have the ball at the 32. Well, the punt bounds down, no fair catch. Block right in the back there. Yeah, there was no doubt about that. But Bethel yep. stripped of the ball. Mason. Rod Mason strips him. So here's first and 10 at the Louisville 31. Fletcher. Across the 30, down to about the 27-yard line. A pickup of four. Kendrick Golston makes the stop. Golston, the backup defensive end, leads the team in sacks, but usually doesn't play a whole lot against the run. Frank Fletcher takes a handoff, and it's just a straight ahead. Frank uh, pounding out the yardage again as he did last week, but how long can he continue to take that kind of beating? Fletcher in motion. They pass on first down, batted away. That was big Derek Lillard who got his paw on that one. It'll be uh, third down and seven. Lillard uh, gets his mitts on this. Borch is trying to just swing it out of the backfield to Frank Fletcher. Lillard does a good job of getting that big hand up in the air and knocking it down. Back to my story. Dayton UNCC, South Florida. Those are three. East Carolina. And of course, East Carolina, the fourth team to mention if they go to 12. Southern Miss, by the way, is in the league. No question about that. Here's Fletcher on third and seven, tripped up, downed at the 21-yard line. Tyrus McLeod, another big play for the middle linebacker. And so the Tigers really played for position that time to get the field goal. They thought maybe Fletcher could break it. He can't. And on fourth down and four, in comes Tejeda. He will kick from the 34. That makes this a 44-yard field goal. His long is 39. He's 0 for 1 from 40 to 49. And it's on the way, and it is good! The longest field goal in Tejeda's short career. The freshman from Miami makes this game 10-3. The Tigers are finally on the scoreboard. And the way a mistake killed Memphis in the first half, a turnover hurts Louisville to start the second. We're back from Cardinal Stadium in the Ville in just a moment. It's new, and Walmart's got it. And we've got it at a price that'll make you smile. Introducing the sleek, new Polaroid Captiva, the all-new instant camera with the difference you can see. 
Its pocket-sized pictures stay in a special compartment until you're ready to take them out. So you're free to shoot and shoot. Captiva and Captiva 95 Instant Film at Walmart. So come see the savings at your hometown Walmart. Always low prices, always Walmart. We think we have plenty to tempt you with in Lincoln Town Car's newly designed interior. For instance, imagine your view of the open road over this sweeping new instrument panel. The feel of these plush new leather seating surfaces. The exhilarating V8 power as you sit back and enjoy first hand the most luxurious town car interior ever created. And oh yes, if you buy now, we'll include this stunning new carrying case. Lincoln Town Car. What a luxury car should be. If this is all you know about the University of Memphis, you've got a lot to learn. We're fast becoming one of the top urban research and resource institutions in the country. We prepare students to compete in the global market and to take leadership roles in the nation while responding to economic, social, health, and cultural needs right here in the Mid-South. The University of Memphis, a leader and partner for a brighter tomorrow. The Tigers finally get on the scoreboard. We're just underway in the third quarter, and it'll be Teddy Lane to kick it off. Back for Louisville. Cal Arrington. Well, the ball gets away, and back into the end zone. He's going to run it out anyway. And down he goes at the five-yard line. A big mistake by Cal Arrington. And I don't know how many of the Tigers' white shirts were around the ball. You see Keith Span there, Kevin Cobb was in there as well. And there's the man pacing it. We felt pretty good for a while there till the fumble, and that's changed the way this game is being played. Look at how it goes. He could let the ball since he hasn't touched it. Well, he should down it right down here. Right. He, could let, he could let it go and down it, and he decided to run up. And there's Cobb. There's Cobb, Britton Wilkins, Scott Singler. Jimmy Beasley's in there, Reddick's in there. I'm sure Coach Schnellingberg will have something to say about that. Four plays, five yards, a minute 15 after the fumble, 44-yard field goal. Remember the fumble came after a poor punt, and the Tigers got the break. That was a poor decision by Cal Arrington. Louisville's making all kinds of men uh, mental mistakes. At the six-yard line, low to the air, Asher right through his hands. Good D. Barry Dillard all over him. The Memphis fans finally have something to cheer about. the bottom row it goes all the way up to the top all those blue shirts those, those tiger fans will have to get accustomed to driving back up here again we we did for a number of years and now with Louisville back in the league this will be a normal trek for uh, for Memphis fans to cover showman got a big block but Jesse Allen was there and a flag may have been a clip or a hold one or the other Tiger defense has really played well against the run. It's the pass that's hurt them in this game. Two big first downs they made late in the second ha uh, second quarter. Well, here's the handoff to Shelman. He's heading outside. There's that, a that's hit where in the, the back that, right that, there. That was where the clip was. Yeah. And then big hits by, you know, that's impressive to see a tackle and a nose guard standing out there in the same spot that the tailback is on a sweep. Here's the call. Illegal block in the back on the offense. Penalty has declined. Penalty it's third down. That's a smart move to make. There was no gain on the play, so it's third down and nine. So you force it down to one last play. Somebody keep an eye on the tight end, Asher. He is so tough in this situation. The guys you got to look for are Asher and Bell. And then be careful because both backs will come out of the backfield and catch passes. One back set up here as Asher moves to a flanker spot. Now it's a no back set up from the shotgun. And Lowe's going to run. No way. Nowhere to go. Good defense that time. Was it Britton Wilkins who Jesse came Allen. in? And Jesse Allen gave some help. Great defensive effort there by the Tigers. An unusual call by Louisville in that they put everybody out in the receiver situation. Marty Lowe is just taking it on a little quarterback draw. Jesse Allen sniffs that out, and here comes a whole host of Tigers. There's old Jesse from that Central High School in Memphis. Top tackler on the team. Came into the game. 
in the 70s with his tackles. Ross Kelly wants to return one. Needs two yards to break the school record. Big kick. Oh, my goodness. And Ross Kelly takes it at the 20, 31-yard line. Ross Kelly breaks the school record right there. Ross Kelly all the way near midfield. Ryan Ross Kelly, there's the magic we saw at Tulsa. Finally stopped by Terry Quinn after a monster punt. Hey, that, that's why Brandon Brookfield is considered a top pro prospect. Came into the game with a career average over 41 yards a punt, averaging 41-8 this year, but out kicks his coverage. That time, 61 yards, but a nice return. And there's a flag on the field, and this time they're saying it's Memphis. Well, here's Ross Kelly setting sail up the side of the field. And whether we'll see the play or not, that might have been back it there. It could have happened right yep. there behind the play. Uh, that looks like Frank Fletcher. That is me. Frankie Fletcher with Ryan Ross Kelly underneath him. So Frankie gets double. The headshot exposure <laughs> on this broadcast. No, they're going to go 10. Referee's going to sort it all out. And they're marching a clip. And there's the where the infraction was. It was later in the play, as we did see. 10 yards march off back to the 32. And I think Ross Kelly picked this thing up at the 31. What does that do to his record? Well, I think he'll get credit for the yardage up to a nearly midfield. He had a 16-yard return. There it is. Right there. Well, that was close, but that, probably the right call. But I believe he gets credit for the return because the penalty was stepped off from the point of infraction. First and 10 Tigers at the 32. They move away from the noisy section. And hopefully they can move a long way away. Big shadow as the sun starts to come down. Ross Kelly in motion. Fletcher, big hole. Fletcher, nine quick yards to the 41. Rico Clark made the stop. There's the acceleration through a tremendous hole. And you got to give guys credit right now. Ludwizak, Miller, and Gomez, those are the three in the middle. Settler and Quinn on the outside. Well, here's Frank Fletcher powering up behind his offensive line, rapidly approaching. I think he's in the range of about 84, 85 yards here early in the third quarter. Second down and a long one. And they give it to Dawkins. And Al Dawkins has the first down and lots more near the midfield stripe. They'll mark him officially at the 48-yard line. Tony Bethel, the defensive back, made the stop. And the Tigers move the chains. Here's the first down play. Everybody follows Fletcher because that's the way the game's been played and there's Al Dawkins a big hole and he says surprise Frank Fletcher the decoy on that play this time it is Fletcher and this time he gets a yard and that's all Terry Quinn moved up and plugged the hole in a hurry under 10 minutes left in the third quarter 10-3 the score Tigers hoping to march down and knock this thing up Turn has really helped to change the way both teams' confidence levels has gone. Tigers got a field goal, then a bad decision on the kickoff return, kept Louisville in the hole. Here come the Tigers, and here's a reverse. Whitman Spalding gets a big block from Joel Pesky, but still good defense by Tony Bethel, and Whitman Spalding couldn't get a, an inch. It'll be third down and nine. Boy, Pesky laid a big hit on them. But Louisville had double coverage there. Here's the reverse to Quitman. Joel Pesky's going to make a big block there on 92, but Tony Bethel steps up. And Quitman Spalding just ran right into him. Well, I'm really impressed with Bethel. He's been all over the place this game. He and Rico Clark and Tony Terry Quinn, they've had big games. Orange will have to pass, and he goes from the shotgun. He doesn't like what he sees and wants to call timeout, and that'll be the first timeout Memphis has used in the game. There's 8.39 left to go here in quarter number three. Momentum going the Tigers' way, but they got a big 39 when we return to Cardinal Stadium in just a moment. 10 
three. That's your score. It's clearance time at Covington Pike Toyota. We got the one. $89.90 for a loaded new Tercel. $98.90 for a loaded new Toyota truck. Over 1,000 new Toyotas, Camrys, Corollas, Celicas, Toyota trucks at the prices you want. $89.90 for a loaded new Tercel. 400 used cars in one location. Nobody outsells clearance time at Covington Pike Toyota. We got the one, we got the one, the one, the one you want. want. Name's Noah, that's all, just Noah. You know, I never get one of anything. And now Kroger's got this buy one, get one free sale. Better hurry. It's going to be a big one. This week, save up to $118 on buy one, get one free items throughout the store. Items like... Plus, save on frozen stewing or baking hens, 39 cents a pound. And boneless top sirloin steaks, $1.99 a pound. I've spent my career talking about good taste. And Captain D's has been serving seafood that tastes good. Now I'm hooked on their new seafood dinner. It comes with a flaky fish fillet, golden fried shrimp, stuffed crab, fries, coleslaw, and hush puppies. Or try the deluxe seafood platter for more of everything. Maybe I can get a job singing for my supper. By the sea, by the sea. Sorry, Charlie. Okay, you're right. Uh, I can't carry a tuna. Try Captain D's new seafood dinner today. Welcome back to Louisville. Dave Will Ocean and Bob Wynn enjoying this one. 10-3, 8.39 to go. The Tigers insert some speed on a big third down and nine near midfield. Chancey Carr, Powell in the game. Some time over the middle, way overthrown. Marty Lowe was looking for Chancey Carr. He threw into three red shirts and one white shirt. I guess he was just trying to throw it away. So Memphis will have to kick it away. Give some uh, cheer to the Louisville side. I haven't had much this second half. Can't keep counting on your special teams and defense to get breaks for you. You've got to move the football a little bit. That's been the problem the whole game for Memphis. The offense just hasn't really put it all together yet. That time, Paramount gets a good lick into the end zone. It goes. So uh, that punt, 52 yards. No return. Louisville will have the ball first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. There's Tim Rose. He's looking stylish. The engineer of that number two ranked defense. Tim Rose serves as a defensive coordinator. There's his son, Kurt, who's a graduate assistant on the uh, team this year. Works with both the Tiger offensive and defensive units. Their touchdown streak of 12 quarters and 23 quarters against the run came to an end in the first quarter. In fact, that's the first time that anybody has taken an opening series all the way downfield against the Tigers this year. Anthony Sheldon picks and chooses his way. Keith Spann knocks him down at the 25. That's a nice pickup for Shellman of five yards. Well, he is truly a, an excellent Halfback. He's been around a while from Bradenton, Florida. Five 100-yard games in his career. He needs to go some to get it here, though. Shellman again. Oh, he got stuck, but close to the first down. Not sure if it was Jerome Woods or Keith Spann who came up and, I mean, really put a knock on Shellman, but he did get the first down. Well, Shellman's a big back. Here he picks and chooses his hole. He's trying to get behind his blockers. That was Back. Jerome Woods. Jerome Woods in there. And Keith Spann from Jackson, Tennessee. Good, good Tiger coverage, but not before Shelman picks up the first down. It's Patrick. Not that time. Jesse Allen made the first contact. Several white shirts knocked him down after that. Tough kid, Chris Fitzpatrick. So you look really, both the running backs are seniors. Arrington is a junior. They got a freshman that they're redshirting this year. They like Brian Beatty. But 
he hasn't played much, so they'll be untested again next year in that department. So don't count out Schnellenberger. He returns eight starters. He's only played 30 players in the first four or five games this year, and yet look what they've done. Low with time in that stage. Almost picked off. Oh, was that good defense on the tight end. Jerome Woods just draped himself on Asher, and Asher pleading with the referee, trying to get the crowd to support him as well for an interference call. But it looked to me from up here that Woods played clean and played good D, and I think that's what the assistant is telling Schnellenberger. Although, <laughs> you look at his eyes, he's not.